Good morning, how you doing? Something a bit different today, I'm taking you on my small dog walk with me. I thought I'd just um, have a bit of a ramble about um, what is Fat Chance actually that I keep going on about to me and you know why do I love it, what is my training schedule um, and all those good things, a lot of juicy stuff and yeah just out in the fresh air right now it's absolutely fabulous with my gorgeous dog Molly down there there she is having a good old sniff because we haven't done this way for a while we've been doing a 6.4k walk with my Nordic walking sticks and yeah the bless her <laughs> she wasn't like really given so much time to stop and sniff and today she's like oh there's new sniffs going on so she's kind of pulling behind me instead of like walking next to me properly but yeah there you go so yeah what is Fat Chance? So Fat Chance was started by or oh, created by Carolina Nurikio in the late 80s early 90s essentially she'd been dancing for a very long time herself her teacher was Masha Archer and at that point in San Francisco it was a bit of a melting pot um, for ideas, creativity, all that kind of stuff and a lot of things um, a lot of things came out of that like one thing I think of for example is like with Kung Fu you know Bruce Lee coming to America and taking you know this fascination which was then seen as the East um, and bringing it to the West, Western, or what is like seen at the moment as the West. I, I don't believe in East and West as such, you know, we live on a globe, but that's a different story. And yeah, the, I mean, not only Kung Fu, but also things, you know, like yoga, that kind of practice, you know, it sort of came over and also things like belly dance, you know, it was all of this, um, and also different religions. So I have to stop because Molly's, you know, doing her thing. Um, so one of these things, like I said, is dance. And the thing that Carolina did is she realised when they were dancing together that if they angled themselves slightly to the left, they were able to see what the person in the lead position was doing much more easily. And then she created a system of cues and like different body movements essentially to tell her followers like the people behind her who were dancing with her you know what they were um gonna do what you know move they were gonna do and it's bloody ingenious <laughs> absolutely ingenious and the whole thing you know took on a bit of a life of its own it's now a bit of a global phenomenon in my eyes you know in, in certainly in the fat chance world it's definitely spread rather a lot god look at this beautiful countryside behind me look at this i'm so lucky so there we go um oh, gorgeous morning <laughs> it's a bit cold it's september all right i've got another car coming they're all gonna laugh at me vlogging because i live in a village and they'll be like what are you doing <laughs> yeah they're just waving at me in the car <laughs> Oh dear, anyway, so that's essentially what it is, but what does it mean to me? Why did I start it? Well, I'm just going to go back up. Now Molly's done her business, because I've got an important phone call to have this morning as well. Another car coming this morning. It's Friday, it's recycling day. And that's what happens in our village, so everybody pops over to the recycling plant and they're all bringing their stuff up there. It's actually pretty cool. And yeah, just let the car go past. <laughs> Alright, so what does it mean to me? And what do I, like, how do I train and all that kind of thing? So I started with, I mean, I'm, I'm going to loosely call it belly dance back in the day like 2004 2005 a really long time ago <laughs> um in the uk it's like i'm from the uk and i live in austria and 
yeah, it was absolutely amazing. Really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed being with the women. An amazing person called Karen Gibbon. Carol Gibbon started that, and I was actually her first student. Um, and at the time, I was super gothy, you know, wearing a lot of black, a lot of black eyeliner. It was just the, the aesthetic that I really enjoyed. And she saw that, and she said, "You know what? I've got this DVD." It's the belly dance superstars there's somebody on there i think you're gonna love and they've got this style called tribal fusion i think that you should try it it looks like it's right up your alley you know I'm like, okay that's cool so she lent me this dvd and yeah i i think many people can identify many fusion dancers for sure can identify with that moment they saw Rachel Bryce's, you know, performance at Folie Berger in Paris. I think it's in Paris. Um, I was hooked. I was like, I want to dance like that. <laughs> she looks amazing. Oh my goodness. And that was it. I absolutely fell in love with that style. Um, couldn't find a teacher. Um, so from there, I met and fell in love with my now husband and after two years, so, so I'm just looking at the ground because there are clovers next to me and I always find four leaf clovers. So I'm kind of keeping an eye out on the floor at the moment to see if there's one there. I can't help it. Um, so yeah, in 2007, he and I moved to Austria. And I couldn't find any anything like dance wise. I thought, what am I gonna do? Um, and at that time, he and I were like renovating the house that we live in, all that kind of good stuff. So I'm just gonna stop for a minute because Molly's been a pain in the bum. Um, yeah. So I was I was pretty busy at that point, you know, learning the language getting like integrated into the society here because it's pretty pretty different the life here is pretty different I mean you can see this gorgeous countryside behind me and I, I came from a town <laughs> it was pretty hard like not just the um yeah not just the language so it was, it was an awful lot of stuff to get used to so dance kind of went by the wayside for a moment and then a year or so later, I met a friend and she said, oh, I want to come and do belly dance. And it's a local college doing it. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I, I went and started doing like belly dance again, but it really, like, I, I did like a 10 week course, but it wasn't for me. Um, yeah, it just, it wasn't my thing. I understand that a lot of people really, really love it, but it wasn't my thing. Like, I'm a bit of a, what they call in German a power frau, <laughs> like a, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not, the, well, I would say I'm not the softest person, but I am, and like, it depends, uh, I'm a bit of a maternal figure these days, <laughs> so yeah, um, and from there, I kept googling, good old Google, kept googling like tribal links, you know, that, that point called tribal still, I kept giving me another car, another wave. <laughs> kept googling it and thinking, God, you know, at some point. And I saw there was this person, Manuela Kraus, and she was doing tribal fusion lessons. She was starting tribal fusion lessons. Oh my God, I couldn't get over myself. I was like, oh! And I literally, guys, you, I drove an hour each way every week from where I live. <laughs> Literally, I drove a whole hour there and a whole hour back so I could do tribal fusion lessons. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, I'm getting looks. <laughs> this is really funny. Uh, so, yeah, I was doing that. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was really fun, but I never like did any performances or anything, really. I mean, I did one for the carnival season here. Um, but that video is dead and buried like nobody needs to see that i was not great but i loved it um 
I kept trying to go with that and then in 2015 I started workshops I always said I'll never do um ATS which is how it was known at that time and at the point at that point I was doing workshops for fusion and like I went to split in 2013 I did an intensive with Jill Parker and Cammy Little and like absolutely amazing like really really loved it but I think I like you know being in a group um anyway so at that point god went so Tristan was born in 2012 so at this point I've now got three children which I still have three children <laughs> and in 2015 I got invited to do a workshop, like to be in a workshop. And I started learning, basically it was like an ATS dialect thing. And it's pretty much what happened in sort of Germany and Austria at that time from what I can see. There was like, I don't think it was overly clearly defined at that point what American tribal style sort of was and people were making up their own dialects. <laughs> own movements if you like and fat chance basically functions like a language if you speak like the queen's english or the high german so to say like the the standard language you can speak with anybody in the world that knows that language so if you dance like fat chance style the basic like actual fat chance style you can dance with anybody in the world even if you can't talk to them if they dance fat chance style too, which I think is bloody incredible. It's absolutely incredible. So I'm going to turn around that way and give you another view. Why not? And I think the sun's better this way. Um, and at that point in Austria and Germany, uh, I think people, you know, were making up their own dialect moves and, 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 and that's basically what happened. Like when I went to this workshop is I learned a whole bunch of dialect and i mean it was great and it was fun it was I really 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 like dancing in 2018 i got invited to join anamkara in linz and i was absolutely thrilled i can't tell you how thrilled i was you guys absolutely amazing um and me being me and being like i, I teach english and i train um people like how to teach english as well so I've studied pedagogy and all that kind of thing. So I really enjoy like teaching. And I think that was like the natural next step for me. But I wanted to know what it was I was teaching. I wanted to know what were fat chan steps, what were dialect steps, all that kind of thing. And if I do something, I, I go at it hammer and tongues. Like I really, um, I give it full gas as they say in German. <laughs> so um i saw and this is a really weird thing let me just sit down here for a minute another car going past i'm sure they're gonna i'm absolutely bonkers okay so in 2013 i went to tribal prague which was a festival that they had going in prague at that point um and i saw a postcard from gudrun herald and I picked, you know, I picked up the postcards because I wanted to have like tribal paraphernalia, um, like tribal dance, what was then known as tribal dance stuff. I wanted sort of some paraphernalia to put out because I thought it was like really cool. And one of the things I happened to pick up was Gudrun Held's postcard. And I had it like pretty much around my desk or like it, it was in my vicinity, sort of on my wall in my uh, utility room. For years, absolutely years, and I could see it was like certified ATS teacher, and I'm like, God, that sounds really cool. But she lives really far away. And then I saw on Facebook at some point that she was giving an intensive in Hanover. And I'm like, Oh my God, guys, guys, I have to go. And Anamkara, bless them, they helped to fund me to go. Like they, I think, yeah, they paid for my train ticket and I just had to pay for everything else, like my accommodation, the ticket, you know, the ticket for the course and everything. And I had the most amazing three times with a friend of mine that went with me, Marissa. It was absolutely 
awesome. And all the way through, I was sort of struggling. I was like, which ones are wrapped dance steps? Which ones can I do? Um, which ones can't I do? And she just... I can't, I'm not grateful. I can't be grateful enough for this. She said to me, it sounds like you need a mentor. And I was like, I do. I'm like stuck in Austria on my own, so to say, and like wanting to learn frat chants. And I've got no idea. So we started private weekly, weekly lessons. She took me on and she like, she really put me through it. Bless her. I mean, like, yeah, I'm super grateful. I, I, I think she's an awesome teacher, an awesome person. She's an awesome friend as well, actually. And she really like taught me what Fat Chance is and what it isn't. God, I am rambling on today. It's another car. I need a car. They're going to think I'm mad. They're not going to understand this vlogging thing. <laughs> so I started these private weekly lessons with her. And from there, the natural step was to start teaching. So two years ago, so I'm now in um, the end of September, almost the end of September in 2022. So in 2020, like beginning of October, I began teaching. And five weeks into teaching, <laughs> oh my God, pandemic, like we went into lockdown and I had to start going online, like five weeks in. But being online was awesome because it also gave me a chance to really accelerate my learning and then I got a um, Fat Chance Belly Dance University subscription as well thanks Deanna for starting that it's incredible if you haven't got a subscription yet <laughs> I highly recommend it uh, oh yeah god I started training with a vengeance absolute vengeance put my name down for general skills and teacher training did my general skills Oh, God, when was it? October 21. Did my teacher training this year. And now I'm the first certified studio in Austria that I know of. Correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> but I, I think I am. I'm the only one on the homepage on fatchance.com. Um, yeah. More cars. This is nuts. We never have this many cars in this village. Okay. So... That's pretty much um, what it is in terms of like my story. As for training, well, sometimes it's up to five times a week, which is a bit bonkers, I know, but I love it. Um, I'm anyway back from my dog walk with my dog right now. I think I've rambled on in her and I'll join you from inside in a moment. Okay. Hey guys, I'm back inside. Um, I just wanted to give a disclaimer quickly. I was only taking Molly on a really, really short walk because she's 13 years old and bless her, like I've been doing a lot of six and a half K walks with her this week and she's pretty tired. So I'm not gonna stress her out. I just took her out this morning for a really, really gentle one so she could do her like business and, you know, come home and get her breakfast. <laughs> so yeah, that's not the kind of walk she normally gets. She normally gets like a really long walk. But yeah, she's gay. She's an old lady and I'm being kind to her. Okay, so I was rambling on a lot about uh, what Fat Chance is, my journey so far with it, which brings me to now. Um. So I'm in Anamkara and in Anamdanza, so I run Anamdanza. Hang on. I'll be back in a second. I have to go and turn my dryer off because it's beeping at me. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> All right. Oh, God. I can't do anything. Like, well, mum, you know, I've got two younger kids at home and one older one that lives in the UK, but yeah, it doesn't stop never stops here so training wise what do I do um yeah like I said I'm in Anamkara and I'm in Anamdanza so I'm just going into the fridge here to get my soy milk out um so Anamkara as I explained before 
I was really sort of dancing dialect with them. And that's how Anam Damza was essentially born. I decided I wanted a group um, where I could just dance fan chants as well. And that's partly why I started teaching, is to get people that, you know, could dance fat chants with me. So that's pretty much how that started. I'm trying to do everything one-handed here, going in the fridge. Okay. Got my cup of tea. Cheers. Wonder Woman here. I'm slurping. It's not very nice, is it? Okay. I've just got to sit down at my computer because I am preparing uh, Master's Level English from Mechatronics this morning that I'll be teaching tomorrow. So as well as teaching dance, I also teach at Master's Level and Bachelor Level in a university. That's fun. <laughs> I really like it. Okay. So... Essentially, Anamkara, um, a lot of the ladies started really like, they really liked what Anam Damza were doing. So I ended up teaching like Anam, a lot of people in Anamkara as well. Anamkara kind of split during the pandemic. It all kind of fractured. People started doing their own things. Um, the online stuff didn't work for everybody. And I think um, many groups suffered from that. So Anamkara kind of halved, and from eight people we went down to four. But we've got a really nice little, um, they say Kern in German, like a little, you know, the hardcore, like, people that came through it, so to say. And we miss the people that left, you know, and they're still always going to be our dance sisters, but, you know, right now what we're doing is concentrate on, concentrating can't speak English myself today. We're concentrating ourselves on um, just improving our technique, drilling things, working together, you know, group bonding, that kind of stuff, you know. And it's working really, really well. And Anam Danza and Anam Kara function really, really well together. And sometimes we even do stuff. Like we, we even dance together, which I really enjoy. So Elizabeth and I are both in Anam Kara and in Anam Danza. So, just trying to think where to go from there. I've just started Sword, and that's um, monthly on Sundays with Virginie Violet. She's incredible. I'll put a link down below. Um, but she's also got an interview on our Anam Danza interview series. It's in German, but we were really, really careful to hand do all of the subtitles. And we've got English subtitles. So, if you speak English, you've got no excuse. Go on over and have a look. She is absolutely amazing. And she's an incredible teacher. She's a really, really incredible teacher. There are many incredible teachers, actually. I'm, I'm really blessed with the people I've learned from so far. And in, so Monday, I get a day off. <laughs> Bad, isn't it? Sunday, so Sunday I did, Monday I get a day off, Tuesdays in three weeks I'll start a beginner's course, around 15 minutes from home from me, which I'm really looking forward to, because it's just a really short drive for my standards. I normally drive about 50 minutes each way to like teach Anamkara and Anamdamza, and Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. And it's in a music school and they've got a ballet room, you know, like with the whole mirror wall and ballet bar and everything. So I'm really looking forward to being in there. We just put a bunch of posters up yesterday. So I hope that the course will be well attended as every teacher does. And Wednesdays I have a private student. And after my private student, I attend Gudrun's intermediate class. So I'm essentially dancing from 5.30 until 9.40 at night at that point on Wednesday. So it's, it's a long one, Wednesday. And by the end of Gudrun's class, I'm usually hanging. <laughs> and she, she always goes on a little bit. So um, yeah, it's like quarter to 10, 10 to 10, and then I'm 
going upstairs and I, I get up at 5.30 most mornings because my daughter has to get up or my kids get up for school and my daughter goes to an, like a school where she has to travel quite a way to get there. So yeah, we have to get up really early. So yeah, whatever. Thursday evenings I teach um, Anam Kara and Anam Danza. So I start at 5.30 and get home at around 10 to 10. And then Friday mornings, eight till nine, I dance with a dance friend of mine just for the fun of it. <laughs> and usually around 11 till 12, around that sort of time, I usually have my private weekly lesson with Gudrun as well. So it is quite a dance week. So why do I do so much of it? On top of like teaching English and having kids and the dog and the husband and you know, all that good stuff. Well, not only is it really cool to have like a beautiful form of movement to do that keeps me fit and healthy and active, depending on how much like effort I'm putting in, sometimes I'm more tired and sometimes I'm not. But, you know, when I'm dancing fast for a long time, I mean, it, you get a muscle ache the next day, you know. Um... So not only is it a form of movement, but I also find it extremely beneficial to mental health and how I see my body and body positivity, that kind of thing. I think generally for women, um, I can't speak for everybody, obviously, but I can only say how I feel myself. I feel there aren't many safe spaces for women just to be themselves and just to be able to show up how they are and however they feel that day and to be accepted exactly like that um very often we are judged in society there's like social ju social judgment um how you look what you wear um how you conduct yourself just um a, a woman can never get it right you know we're either too too fat too thin too tall too short the hair's curly the hair's straight the boobs are too big the two boobs are too small um, often these things are about our appearance, but it also goes deeper than that. I was, I read Ambitious Like a Mother recently and oh my goodness, it really, really affected me. Um, Lara Basildon, I think is the person that wrote it. Correct. I'll see if I, I'll, I'll insert her proper name. Like I'll just have a quick check and I'll insert it in here. But she was saying that when you have the word ambitious associated with a mother, it's considered to be really bad. I mean, as soon as you have kids, you are assumed or it's assumed by society that you will reduce your hours. You will be the primary caretaker and you will reduce your ambition and your career so that, you know, you are around for your kids. And these expectations, these social expectations are never really, rarely, I can't say never, but social expectations are like very, very rarely um, given to fathers. It's assumed, it really, I feel it's really, really assumed that it's the mother that's going to be the primary caretaker. Everything is set up in society for the mother to be the primary caretaker and a woman's ambition is severely reduced. I think, but we don't lose it. You know, we, we still want to, um, we still want to have all these hopes and dreams and things. And I think it is really great to have a space where women can come together and build something together and be caring and connecting and it doesn't matter how you show up or turn up or what you look like. Everybody looks great in a fat chance belly dance costume because it's been designed that way to really accentuate curves, which really helps with the body positivity thing. My body's changed a lot since I've had kids. I went from being pretty thin I would say, back in the UK, to being pretty curvy these days. I mean, you can see photos of me, like, online, you know. Um, but in a fat trans costume, I feel absolutely amazing. I feel absolutely amazing. Like, I, I feel 
really cute, you know? And that kind of comes across as well in the dance classes. We support each other. We have to watch each other's body language. We have to be very aware of each other. And I, for me, it's almost like a therapy session every week, you know? Even though we're not talking so much because, you know, we're dancing, we're, we're still speaking with each other. We can see if somebody's like sad or upset or angry, if they had a bad day, if they're happy, however they show up. And it doesn't matter. We're like kind of talking with each other, with our eyes, with our body language, you know. And it really does give people a safe space to just come and just be. And I think it's absolutely incredible. I don't think there's one class yet that I've either participated in or taught where I have not come out beaming from ear to ear. You know, really, really enjoy it. Really makes me smile every single week. So, you look great. It's great for your mental health. It keeps you fit physically as well, especially if you're cross-training. And many people cross-train with things like yoga or Pilates as well. Um, Diana on Fat Chance Belly Dance University has got an awful lot of like yoga, um, yoga training things for Fat Chance dancers that can really help them as well. So I would highly recommend checking that out and having a look. I've rambled on quite a lot today. Um... I'm going to also insert in here um, a small video just to show you Tina and Elizabeth training. Like This was just a pair work activity thing that we did yesterday. And you can see Elizabeth is like mirroring what uh, Tina is doing, you know, with the rolling of the shoulders and everything. You can see the connection between them. And you can see how they're working with each other to make this like box passing thing that they're doing work and I find it absolutely incredible and you also see them both laughing with each other at the end because they've enjoyed it so much so I just thought it would be really nice insert for you to see what goes on at a training as well how do you guys train how do you guys do it you know what do you guys do when you train how long do you train for how often do you train um yeah all the good stuff pop it in the comments below i know i've rambled a bit but that's what i do <laughs> yeah there you go that's this week's like vlog from from me i hope you also had a great week and yeah i look forward to seeing you next week <laughs> If you liked this video, I would really appreciate it. If you give me a like, give me a thumbs up. Um, I would really appreciate you guys subscribing. If you've got the time, if you like what you've seen and you'd like to see more of it. And in the meantime, I'll let you go because I've got an awful lot of stuff to get on with and I'm sure you're busy too. Big love. Bye bye.